the guy who could cover just about anyone back in the day, former Los Angeles. Oakland Raider. Yeah, they were Los Angeles. Don't, don't insult them. Don't insult them. They're back with, in <laughs> Oakland where they belong. Willie Brown, how you doing, Willie? I'm doing great, guys. How you guys doing? Good. So what's well, going on with the Raiders now? Who's the coach going to be? Well, I, I'm not sure, really. We're in the process of right now looking for another head coach, and uh, Reggie's done a good job, you know, doing the research and everything, trying to find someone that, that you know, that fit in with the organization. You have yourself a new general manager just settling in. How's that going? Well, it's going well. You know, he's his biggest assignment right now is trying to find a head coach, and uh, he's you know he's working hard uh, on that every day and every hour, every minute, I guess, trying to find that particular individual. Now, f- <clears throat> Reggie McKenzie going from the Packers to the Raiders, not quite the same organization. Is he in a state of shock, or is he uh, making the transition pretty good? No, I don't think he's in a state of shock. You know, Reggie, he 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 is familiar with the Raiders organization. He played here and been around the guys who played here and coached here before and uh I think he you know he he he's on the right track because you know he's talking to Mark Davis every day and they trying to get together and, and find that particular individual. How is Al Davis's son different than Al? Well, um Mark is more outgoing guy than Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis kind of reserved and laid back and he does his own thing. But uh but Mark is the type of guy who listen and Understand football. He's been around football all his life and has done a tremendous job. He's been involved with the Raiders one way or another uh, since his day, Mr. David took over as, as the uh, a head coach here. It seems like Al Davis really took care of the former players. He kept them on staff yourself, Jim Otto, Fred Bolitnikoff. I mean, once you're a Raider, you're a Raider for life. No question about that. We have had at one time 15 guys employed by the Raiders, former guys who have played here. And that was one thing about Mr. Davis. He always took care of the players that played for him, uh, you know, making sure that they're okay. And he found a position for him. And, and, and uh, I, I think it's great. Uh, I've been here 41 years now, so uh, everything is fine with me and the organization, and things were fine with him. <clears throat> so I'm pretty sure it will be the same with Mark uh, and Mrs. Davis. Uh, they understand what in the process that Mr. Davis was doing, how he handled the players. And Mark feel the same way, you know, it's – everybody with the Raiders and come back to the Raiders. They'd be part of the family. And that's the way Mark treated and that's the way Mrs. Davis treated. Now, when players come in, do, do they get that impression fairly quickly that this is a family? Yeah, they do, you know, because of uh, because their background. You know, when when you play for the Raiders and you come up such a long time and, you know, five, six, seven, ten, fifteen years, whatever it may be, uh, you feel, you know, you feel right at home because of uh, – your background uh, as a player, uh, you know, tend tend to you know care over, and uh, you know everybody in the organization understand that because once a Raider, always a Raider, and that's the thing we like to live by. You know, when you have been in this organization, you understand the organization, you understand Mr. Davis when he says certain things and do certain things. So it been fine. You played a Grambling under the legendary coach Eddie Robinson. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. The only coach in college that you want to play for. What was that like? <laughs> uh, demanding uh, and understanding the, the game of football, period. And, uh, you know, Eddie, he, Eddie Robinson, he, he taught you to play many positions. Uh, like when I was at Grambling, uh, I was in starting tight end, and I was a starting linebacker uh, at Grambling. So then sometimes he put me at halfback, sometimes he put me at tight end, sometimes he put me at wide receiver. So. Uh, he, was, he was very aware and, 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 and had the knowledge uh, to see and understand that uh, his players that he bring into ground, they had a lot of talent, and they could play on any level. You know, when when you play that ground, and uh, I, I told a lot of guys this, our team, the starting team uh, uh, for Gramlin for three or four years was was uh, was really great. And uh, you could have played, you know, like I said earlier, you could have played many positions, but, but the starting team, that I played on was bigger than the inner protein coming out. So you entered the NFL as an undrafted free agent. What was how difficult was that? Well, it really wasn't difficult. I I, I never had my eyes set on on, on playing pro ball. Uh, I had other goals in mind, and that number one is to get my uh, education, get my degree, and go and coach in high school. That was that was my main goal to go back and start coaching in high school, but. Uh, we had so many great ball players on my senior year 
that I mean, team was coming in trying to sign whoever they could sign. And they, and Buck Buchanan was the number one draft choice that year coming up. So uh, I knew that uh, if I wanted to play, I had an opportunity to, to play because the Houston Oilers came in and they offered me a contract. It wasn't much, of course. <laughs> $10,000, I believe, what they offered me and I signed. But uh, – I, I, I saw the competition in that, I, that I match up against playing the defensive back position. When I, when I got there, uh, I had played college football as a linebacker and as a tight end. So my first day of training camp, uh, they stuck me outside on the corner. And I didn't know anything about playing corner, of course, but uh, I picked it up fast. You did. I mean, in that Super Bowl, when you intercepted that Tarkenton pass and ran 75 yards for a touchdown, you had to be winded. Well, no, I, I, you know, when I got winded after I got in the end zone, and all the players rushing on the field, patting me <laughs> on the back and throwing me around and jumping up and down. That's when I really got tired. But the run wasn't bad because I was in pretty good shape and uh, at the time. And, uh, you know, it gets part of uh, things that you do every day in practice. Now, as a defensive back, who who was your uh, toughest receiver to cover? Well, you know, it's, it's, that's a question people always ask me, uh, who was the toughest receiver, who was the best receiver. And I tend to look at those guys that I played against uh, who was in the Hall of Fame, of course. And guys like Paul Warfield, Lance Allworth, those, Charlie Taylor, you know, those particular guys that I had a lot of respect for, particularly when I played against Lance, because Lance was a guy who, you know, who, who hustled on every play, whether it was a run or a pass, he would do the same thing. So you, you had to pay attention to him and because he was tough. And Paul Warfield, Paul was, was Paul ran ran very good routes, you know. Uh one time I was covering Paul and I swear to God, Paul jumped up in the air and changed direction while he was up in the air. <laughs> and I it, it I said, Man, how in the world are you gonna defend that? So what I did is start playing them tight, you know, tight cover, bump and run covers. And uh that's when I you know, I was the first one to start playing bump and run covers and I knew that receivers couldn't get by me because of my size. And uh, I was just as fast as they were, so uh, I decided to get play them, play them tight, and that's where I played Paul. What about Blitnikoff? Did you cover him during practice, or did someone else? Yeah, I covered Fred, but Fred stayed away from me because I he knew I was gonna beat the hell out of him when I played <laughs> Bob and Ryan. So Fred, Fred stayed on the other side. He he didn't want no part of me, and, it, and I probably didn't want any part of him either. But uh, you know, Fred Fred was small, uh, but he had very big hands, and good hands. You know, and that was the thing about Fred. If you throw it. Anywhere near him, you know that he was going to catch it. You know, so yeah, we we had men in battles in practice, but majority of the time, uh, Fred he he stayed away from me and stayed on the other side of the field from me. Would you like to be a defensive back in today's NFL? Well, it's easier today. Yes, I I I, I probably could play it and play it very well. I would think because of the scheme that they use now and how they play certain coverages. But uh, during my time, we played pretty much man to man coverage. The only time we got in a three deep zone or two deep zone is right before the half, uh, trying to prevent a long pass or something like that when the game is over. But uh, but during my time, yes, the defensive backs in the league they picked up on playing man to man, and other teams tried to play bump and run and tried to play man to man, but they did not have the talent that we had with the Raiders in order to play it. So uh, it's amazing that a lot of coaches during the off season. They would send their ball play. They'd contact me and try to get me to to teach their defensive back how to play bump and run. What do you think of this Tim Tebow phenomenon in Denver? Well, you know, the, the Tebow, the Tebow is a good athlete. No, no, no question about it. Uh, but I would like to play him, you know, uh, pretty much every day. If the, you know, but the thing about it, you got to be ready for the run with him. You don't know if it's going to be a pass. You don't know if it's going to be a run. So, so what do you do? You take away the pass and make him run and. Uh, Sooner or later, you know, you you get to him a few times, and he's gonna th- start throwing the ball anywhere. So, uh, but like I say, he's, he's a good ball player. You know, he's 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 a he's a guy that does his homework, and the guys that study and as the opponents, and uh, he gets what he can get. Now, can a, a quarterback whose passing is that inaccurate make it in the NFL? Well, I I I, I think there's a place for a guy like that, but error down play is gonna be tough because you. you predict you know some of the things that, that he's going to do but uh yeah they he, he can play because of he's so versatile you know he uh he's a big running back you know when you when he take off and try to run so you got to be aware of that you have to know you know what's going on with him what he's trying to do and but 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 first of all you take away the pass from him and make him run the ball 
What was your last question? What was your favorite moment in your career? Ooh, my favorite moment. There, there are so many. You know, there, there are a lot of them because my career was was, was good, and in my eyesight, you know, it was very good. And, and I mean, every game, every week, my, you know, I had something good happen to me. So, there, the, I guess to cap it all, probably would be the Super Bowl when I ran it back uh, for seventy-five yards for a touchdown. Probably one of my highlights. But other one, I intercepted four passes in one game, and I had one other one would have been five, but uh, the referee called roughing the quarterback or something like that. So. I mean, things like that was is, is outstanding. You know, when you got three three interceptions in the game, four interceptions in the game, things like that kind of sticks out. You probably killed the player who roughed the passer. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. Then, you know, playing in so many Pro Bowls and those kind of things, getting to know the players that I play against, you know, during the regular season and have a chance to, to visit with them and practice against them and get to know them. That's that's exciting because a lot of guys that, that I played against uh, – uh, in college, they, you know, usually all the guys played in playing pro ball and and, and played in the, in the uh, pro ball. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. You're welcome, guys.